Hello, I am Joe Stanton, Chief of Police for the City of Texas City, and I support Special Olympics Texas. When you support Special Olympics, you're expressing your love, admiration, and gratitude in a very meaningful way. Your support will honor and empower special athletes on the playing field and in life. For many of the athletes, Special Olympics is their only hope, their only chance to participate in sport, to experience joy of competition, and to be part of their communities. Through Special Olympics, their lives change radically. They discover inner strength and capability that change their minds about their own self-worth and the minds of everyone around them. Special Olympics athletes are never charged for training or competition. All these expenses are fully covered through generous financial support from donors, sponsors, benefactors, people like you and me. Through your support, the Special Olympic athlete inspired greatness. Donate to the Special Olympics and start changing lives today. Thank you for tuning in, and with that, we would like to welcome you to the Breakfast Champions Gold Coast. People look at you. They stare. They all stare. They point at you. They shout things. They make you feel different. to the dark hide away they say cause we don't want your broken parts I've learned to be ashamed of all my scars run away they say you don't want to love you as you are I'm asking you athletes to show the world what it looks like to lead from the heart Franny do you have a message for all the athletes I love you. Look out, cause here I come. And I'm marching on to the beat and drum. I just want to make my family proud. I feel so happy to be here to compete with a group of guys that I love. They said I would never walk, jump, or run. I just proved them all wrong. You did good. Thank you. You as well. We are bursting through the barricades and reaching for the sun. Yeah, that's what we've become. Won't let them break me down with dust. I know that that is a place for us. For your glory. No matter what your disability is, you can compete. And if you train as hard as you have, you can win gold just like I did. Morning. I am Tank Shottle and I am a Special Olympics Texas athlete. My favorite sport is softball. I want to thank you for joining us today for our virtual Breakfast with Champions. This is an opportunity for you to hear the stories about some of our athletes, their families and supporters. And why Special Olympics Texas is so important to us. I hope you enjoy our presentation and please remember to donate if you can. We appreciate your support. Thank you. 
Thank you, Tank. Such an amazing guy and an inspiration. We're going to hear more from Tank coming up shortly. Well, good morning to our Special Olympics Texas athletes, families, friends, and all their great supporters. Thank you all for joining us for this special event. It's our virtual Breakfast with Champions Gulf Coast via Facebook Live. That is quite a title. I'm Greg Bailey, Sports Director at ABC 13 in Houston. I'm so proud to join you today. We are coming to you from a remarkable facility here in Galveston at Sea Star Base and we're so glad everybody could join us. We're happy today to celebrate our wonderful athletes and the principles that drive so much of what we do with Special Olympics. Those are acceptance, inclusion, and respect. Normally, of course, we would be in a big ballroom, plenty of guests, all our athletes, friends, and supporters, but due to precautions surrounding COVID-19, we're coming to you virtually, of course. So for now, from the comfort of your office, maybe your home, Please join us and enjoy these heartwarming stories that make Special Olympics so incredible. We're going to tell you how Special Olympics Texas has positively impacted all our athletes and their great families. When this program is over, you will have a true understanding of that magical phrase, heart of a champion. Now this is a fundraising event, so throughout our program, you will be asked to make a donation. We do need to point out. COVID-19 has severely impacted our ability to raise funds during this time. So this is the perfect moment for you to make a donation and support the Special Olympics programs that bring so much joy to everybody who is involved, along with the social programs that are provided to our athletes. Again, thank you for joining us today and showing your support for all these athletes. We also want to thank our valued sponsors who make so much of what we do possible. You will see them mentioned along the bottom of the screen. So before we get it started, it is my pleasure to introduce the president and CEO of Special Olympics Texas, Tim Martin. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tim Martin, CEO and president of Special Olympics Texas, and I want to welcome you to Breakfast with Champions. Thank you so much for being here. You know, these great events don't happen at Special Olympics without sponsors. So I want to take a moment to recognize our Breakfast with Champions sponsors for today. We also have another group that works year round to make sure the resources are there for our athletes and volunteers in the community. So our local resource board, we really want to make sure that they have a chance to be recognized as well today. You know, these times have been very unique for us at Special Olympics Texas. But in a lot of ways, if you look at it, there's a lot of lessons to be learned. The isolation we felt being at home, the lack of access to family members and friends, the inability to just freely go and do what we want, that is missing. But you know what? If you really look at it, in so many cases, you're, you're living the lives of so many of the athletes at Special Olympics Texas. It's an opportunity for you to understand and empathize with them and to make sure you understand that this is a powerful moment when you don't have the chance to share your greatnesses the talents that you can't can utilize to change society, a voice to be heard. These are great opportunities for you to realize it's a chance for us to move forward. With that at Special Olympics, we've worked really hard in these tough times to get to those points. Over the last two years, we've really struggled to change this organization and put it in a new direction of inclusion, health, and life-changing experiences for our athletes. And as we drive forward with that mission, we want to make sure that you're all aboard to be a part of that. So let me talk to you a little bit about the story. A lot of you heard this my first year here. Met an athlete in high school by getting in trouble and sentenced to Special Olympics. I certainly felt like I was too good to be there. I was better than all of those athletes. I was better than any individual in that room. And then I realized I wasn't even close. Those individuals made sure I felt cherished. They made sure that they honored me every time I walked in with a smile. They made sure I never went unrecognized. They, were, they had the power to change the human spirit. And that's what Diana, who was the individual I was paired up with, did for me, long before there was a label called Unified Sports. 
But I will tell you folks, we have over 50,000 amazing individuals that can change your life if you open your life to them and allow them to come through those doors. Then we also had some difficult moments where we had a parent tell me one time as we had a dance team performing on stage at opening ceremonies, as she pointed at our athletes and said, those people should not have to see things like this. Those people, what is those people? Those people is an easy barrier to put ourselves between someone else, to either label them different, label them less, label them not as important. That won't happen at Special Olympics Texas. So we came up with a motto at that point. We're all one of those people. Get over it, play unified. Unified is a way for us to change the world through inclusion. What is unified? It is the backbone of Special Olympics. It is an opportunity for those with and without intellectual disabilities, or as we prefer to call them, different abilities at Special Olympics, to drive forward, build those relationships, build those social opportunities, life-changing opportunities like employment, but also health and sport and drama and art, a way to make sure that we have a stage to reveal the greatness that lies in every human being. Unified is an amazing program. We have some great partners and amazing growth to talk about in that area as well. The UIL, the world's largest interscholastic program, has officially said we want to be involved with Special Olympics. And vice versa, we said, of course we do as well. And we anticipate 200% growth over the next four years. That's 100,000 more athletes coming into our movement. A chance for us to be there and support so many new lives. But also, when you just think about athletes coming into our movement, that's 100,000 partners as well. More volunteers, more families. Special Olympics, we truly are unified. Also, health. Did you realize Special Olympics is the world's largest provider of, of health services to individuals with intellectual disabilities. But it's not just screenings anymore, folks. In the last two years, we've grown to do preventative health, healthy lifestyles, follow-up exams, and follow-up care, at no charge to our athletes through our great networks. We continue to push that forward, and we need your support as we do that. But most importantly, we want everybody to realize you can be involved at Special Olympics, you can be unified, and we need you to be involved. But more than involvement, folks, during these times, this has been the leanest time in Special Olympics history, not in just in Special Olympics Texas, but throughout the world. We have incredible work being done. We've completely revamped our programming to both be in person and virtual, but we need your support. Today, please give to Special Olympics Texas, and in return, we guarantee to you we will deliver amazing programs to our athletes, volunteers, families, and all of those that choose to be a part of this great inclusive movement at Special Olympics Texas. Thank you, Tim, and thanks for the incredible job that you and your team have done for Special Olympics. Now, before we get to our athletes' great stories, we do want to call your attention to the Chiron at the bottom of the screen with information on how you can donate and help deliver these world-class quality sports programs along with the social engagement programs for thousands of athletes here in the Houston area. There's information on how you can easily donate with a link below as well. Special Olympics Texas, we point out, it has one of the strongest charity ratings anywhere. Rest assured, we will make the very best use of your dollars to help our athletes achieve their dreams. So we encourage you to give whatever you can. You might encourage your friends, your coworkers, your family members to donate as well. Now, without further ado, we are pleased to welcome another one of our incredible Special Olympics Texas families. Please welcome Tim, Sherlyn, and Mackenzie Schilling. Welcome to all of you. Thank, Thank you. you so much for joining with us today. Sherlyn, if we could start with you, uh, tell us about Mackenzie and her involvement in Special Olympics. Mackenzie's been doing Special Olympics. Or we've all, it started at Stephen F. Austin when she was in, was it fifth or sixth grade? And then so she does the ball. Softball we started class. with yeah, the tennis ball and then the softball, and then she's progressed up to the hardball. But, and then we do um, bowling as well these last two years. And if they had an Olympic event, event for throwing an iPad, she would definitely win. <laughs> she would win the iPad toss. 
That's all right. Maybe we'll work on adding that one to the, to the curriculum. Tim, uh, I know that you've been involved in Special Olympics for, for quite a long while in a couple of different avenues. Please explain to us that. Yes, sir. I had a, a handicapped brother when I was growing up. He was eight years younger. He had a severe handicap, and uh, we participated in Special Olympics then. Um, in high school, me and my friends helped out. It's a really rewarding uh, effort. Um, and then, of course, when, when Mackenzie's disability, we participated in Special Olympics for about seven years now with her. That's outstanding. Sherlyn, how would you describe the value of having a wonderful community inside of Special Olympics, not only for Mackenzie, but your entire family? It's actually very um, rewarding, and the support is really nothing to compare to our other friends who have been involved, who used to actually work with Special Olympics as well, would always ask us to come and we would volunteer. So, I mean, it's and you don't really think about it, how much, how rewarding it is. But once you sit and you see how happy everybody is, especially the athletes, it's pretty cool. Yeah, it's very cool. Tim, you mentioned to us, we love the events, maybe don't love practice so much. How does that kind of play out? Uh, practice can be a little uh, difficult at times. Uh, maybe Mackenzie doesn't want to wake up on a Saturday to go, but uh, it, it's fun. And to see the the, the kids being involved in the practice, and it, it's great and rewarding for everybody. And Tim, I would love to come back to this. How, how has the community kind of impacted your family from your viewpoint, having that kind of support through Special Olympics? Uh, it's really wonderful and uh, very heartwarming to see that people care that much. Um, most certainly Ball High and uh, GISD have been a great supporter in Special Olympics. It goes beyond the Special Olympics. They have a float in the uh, homecoming parade. And um, it, it's really, really special to know that people care. Yeah, it's wonderful. Sherlyn, you, you brought some hardware here. We've got quite a collection. Can you show that off and, and tell us what these medals represent? Since she started, she's gotten, uh, let's see, the bronze twice, silver, and then gold for her toss. Yeah. She's worked real hard. And that is outstanding. And, and, and just seeing that kind of reward for something that she's put herself and her heart into what kind of impact does that have for you guys oh we're proud no doubt it makes her feel special and part of um, school and and active so it, just like all the other kids it really makes them feel part of what you'd call a normal life however you define that in today's world yeah being part of a community is maybe how i would describe that fair enough yeah, that, that, that's outstanding. Sherlyn, to, to families who may be considering getting involved in Special Olympics, what would your message? Take the plunge. It's actually, you know, it's a little frightening at first because it's unknown that you've never done it before. But, you know, the community that embraces you when you get there, it's, you know, unbelievable. It's definitely worth it. How did somebody maybe help you when you got started and weren't sure what you Well, were just the coaches. They, you know, came and said, you know, there's no right, there's no wrong as long as you show up. Do your best and you know the kids it's all about the kids and you can see it, it's evident outstanding tim what would your message be to those families uh, um, get involved um expand your horizons if you will um, embrace the the fact that somebody's out there supporting these special people yeah and, and specifically here in galveston th there's room for growth here how proud are you of what the community has done and, and how much room is there for growth here? Um, I think there's a, a huge room or huge space for growth. Um, some people shy away from the challenges that these kids have. It's not easy in all aspects, but I think once you, like Sharon said, once you take that step to the other side, the rewards far outweigh the, the challenges. Yeah, and, and what do you think the future holds for you guys within Special Olympics? Let's go with you first. Um, we'll, we'll keep participating, most certainly as long as McKenzie's involved. And then I think even afterwards, now that, that we're kind of embedded in it, um, whether it support the uh, activities um, or the, the events themselves, I mean, it's a little more challenging these days with all the COVID stuff. Sure, Lynn, this must have touched your hearts if you guys are not only involved for your own family but are willing to be involved for other families going forward how would you describe the impact it's made on you as a mom for it's really heartwarming like even people who you don't know come up or if they're asking they see mckenzie and they're like what's that medal for or you know just ask questions and it really <laughs> means a lot that someone took the time out 
to you know, ask what's going on. Or And I say to them, if you have a question, don't be afraid to ask a parent because I think education is the biggest aspect of their, you know, all growth. Well, you guys are wonderful. Yeah, thank you so much for sharing your story and taking time with us. Mackenzie, thank you as well. Good luck to you in your next competitions and win some more of those medals, okay? Thank you guys very much. We'll be right back. Good morning. I'm Darius Geary. I've been especially a bit successful at the for three years. I got to run track and field. I also got to play basketball. Thank you for joining today for your book show, Breakfast with Cherries. Your support makes it possible for me and me and my friends to continue to do the things we are. We deeply appreciate your support. Dick. Thank you, Darius. One of the great things about the Special Olympics program is the support we get from our law enforcement community, specifically the Law Enforcement Torch Run. Our next representatives are part of the LETR program. They're also beginning their involvement with the Unified Sports Program. So let's welcome Officer Brooke Avendano, Corporal Darrell Armstead, along with one of our Special Olympics athletes, Alex Christian. Welcome one and all. Thank you guys for spending some time with us. Alex, um, first of all, tell us about your involvement in Special Olympics and maybe what your favorite sport is. Track and field. Track and field, and what do you like about it? Mm -hmm. Driving and running for uh, track and field and chop putt. That's fantastic. All right, well, you certainly know our guests here. They're great representatives of the law enforcement community from UTMB. Corporal Armstead, let's start with you. How did you get involved in Special Olympics? I actually got involved um, when my department first heard about it. They were introduced to Special Olympics through another officer who just joined our department. Um, I wanted to know more about it. However, I wasn't able to attend Torch Run that year. Uh, I decided to get more involved the next year. I went to a couple of events that the athletes were out at and it just piqued my interest. I was, I was all about it. I wanted to know more about it and uh, that next year actually they were looking for somebody to take over it and that's when I asked if I could take it on. And that was about four years ago. <laughs> so we've been trying to get more events involved in Galveston area. If they're not involved in Galveston area, if it's a short drive, we'd get involved in those. Um, whether it be the actual polar plunge or the fire truck pool, uh, bowling for badges, the tip of cops, um, the cops on top um, of the donut places, and um, the 5 OK run that we do. Officer Avendano, how would you describe the rewards of being involved with the Special Olympic program? Um, I feel like it's very rewarding. We get to help them and give back to the community, especially with the special athletes like Alex and getting to meet them. Um, there's a lot of them, so and then seeing the smiles on their faces when we get to come out in uniform or without uniform. Uh, we actually, for the polar plunge, we all dressed up for as lost tourists uh, with Alex <laughs> okay. and jumped in the polar plunge. It was actually cold, so... <laughs> We did it on East Beach in Galveston, so we actually had a fun time doing that. I've been doing it for two years now with Corporal Armstead, so I love it. The, the polar plunge is very popular. Alex, you actually took part in this last year? Yes. How cold was it? It was freezing. <laughs> was, it, was it fun? Yes. And what do you think about these guys jumping in there with you? Yes. Yeah, they, yeah. it's really good, isn't it? Corporal Armstead, how would you describe this law enforcement torch run? This is such a big part of Special Olympics moving forward. The torch run is an amazing opportunity for, to get all the officers in the state of Texas involved. Um, I remember the first year I did it, it was, it was just mind-blowing. We started off in Galveston and we ended up in Houston for the send-off. And looking at the amount of officers that just came from the, our region and the, the surrounding regions together just for that first run, um, I want to say it was probably around 50 officers and we ran by so many schools uh, and areas that brought out the athletes. And just going by and seeing their, like Officer Amadonna said, their, their smiling faces and, you know, handing them uh, small trinkets, uh, law enforcement trinkets, it just brightens their day and, and that involved, brightens our days. Um, and then just running to different areas, well, driving different areas sure. and then running in those cities. Sure. Um, getting more officers involved until we actually 
met up in Arlington at that point in time. I think that's where all the, the regions met. And marching out onto that field um, in uniform and seeing the amount of athletes that were, came out for us and their smiling faces and being a part of them and talk to them and their families, you just, it broadens your aspect of what's going on in, in this world and what, you know, what they do every day and what they deal with. Um, and just being a part of just, like Alex said, he loves track and field, just going out and volunteering you know, 30 minutes or an hour and helping them with that and talking to them about what goes on in their lives is an amazing opportunity. That's outstanding. Officer Avendano, what, what jumps out to you about, about the LETR? Um, getting to meet all the athletes, exactly what Corporal Arms had said, you know, there's a lot of them out there and then there's so many, uh, the families getting to, and we actually met Alex, you know, Officer Diaz is one of an officer with UTMB. He's one of our officers. So we actually got to meet Alex through him. Um, so that was very rewarding, you know, getting, having a special athlete in our department. So it helps bring awareness to our department and then it helps bring more smiling faces, more awareness to others out there. Just uh, That's fantastic. Corporal Armstead, maybe finish with this. If, if people are, are thinking about becoming involved in Special Olympics, what would your message to them be? Get information, make a small donation, um, then come out, talk to us, talk to Tina, talk to me, uh, talk to Officer Avendano or the other a lot of officers who are involved in law enforcement at other departments. We will introduce all the athletes like Alex and their families, and then we got you attached. You know, that's, that's, that's all we want, is we want you to just kind of come out and talk to them and be involved with them. And All right, can I get a commitment from everybody that you're going to be involved in the Polar Plunge again? Oh, definitely. <laughs> if we get a commitment from you that you'll be there as well. I will be there. Right, Alex? <laughs> yes. I will be there. You put me on the spot, I will be there. How about that? Good. Is that a deal? Alex, you going to be there? Yes. Fantastic. <laughs> Thank good. you guys so much Thank for you. everything and for your time today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning, my name is uh, Lisa, this is Owen, and uh, we've been with Special Olympics for seven years. Owen has been a Special Olympics athlete. His favorite sport is tennis. Please donate if you can. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Owen. Our next guest has an incredible story, but Tank Shottle's story a little bit different than others you might hear through Special Olympics Texas. You heard from Tank earlier in the program, now it's our pleasure to welcome him back, Special Olympics Texas athlete Tank Shottle. Tank, great to see you. Thanks for taking time with us. Thank you for having me. One of the things that makes your story so unique, 19 years in Special Olympics, how would you describe those 19 years? Oh, it's a blessing to me, you know. I mean, everything's changed, you know, from since I started. Um, I'm so blessed and I'm honored to be part of a wonderful organization and I get to spend time with my athletes and teammates, coaches, volunteers, uh, law enforcement, and I'm so blessed to, and I'm gonna continue to do it uh, the rest of my life and I love it so much. One of the things, again, that makes your story unique, you participate in seven sports. Please list the seven, tell us your favorite. I play softball, basketball, volleyball, track, bocce, golf, and soccer. My favorite sport is, is softball. And, and one of the great things about softball is it's a team sport. How would you describe what it feels like to accomplish something great with your team? You know, it, it's, it's a blessing. I mean, you get to spend time with your athletes, you know. We have new players year in, year out at times, and I think it's great to get to see your old teammates, see how they're doing, how life is going, and I think it's great to spend time with the athletes, and it's so, it's so great to compete with your teammates, just to have fun and enjoy it and just have a great time in sports. That's something I love to be around my teammates a lot. So you started Special Olympics when you were 12 years old, long time ago, nearly 20 years ago. What was it like when you first discovered how much fun it was to be involved with Special Olympics? Oh man, it's just blessed. I mean, you know, I can go back, you know, 12, being 12 years old, I mean, you know, everything's different than it is now. I mean, you know, we're in a different generation now. I think that, you know, when you go back those years, you know, I didn't know what Special Olympics was all about back then. And each year I got to know about it for the organization, you know, 
having disability, special needs, autism, I think it's just been a wonderful opportunity to be part of this organization and get to know all the athletes year in, year out, just to be with them and get to know them and, you know, get to meet the teammates, the coaches, and everyone from the organization of the state of Texas. When you say you inspire people, that's transition for you because now you've taken a bit of a leadership role. How would you describe what you've learned about leadership being involved in special Olympics? Leadership is like you're you're helping people, you know, you know, motivate people that we can do great things for the organization. I think that, you know, you know, been doing it for a long time. I love being part of leadership just to help athletes, help the coaches, volunteers and law enforcement that we can come together for Special Olympics. And I think it's so grateful, appreciate in life that, you know, anything is possible. And, you know, I'm very grateful that I just love doing, doing Special Olympics. And I'm so, and I will continue to share my leadership for all everyone all the athletes everyone that we could do great things for Special Olympics going forward and I can't wait to to keep doing it and keep sharing my stories for years to come so you start young you've learned all these great lessons you've obviously grown as an individual to the point now got a job with the Sugarland Skeeters man w what job is it how rewarding is that oh it's a blessing you know first year with the Skeeters you know I got to receive the my first bobblehead and you know a lot of people came to that game and it was it was packed a lot of people it was such an honor to receive that bobblehead and you know we were very close to winning that championship my first year and we came up short but it was just a wonderful experience to spend time with one of my other athlete, Big Mike, he's been with the skaters for a long time and he helped me so much just to get used to the routine and everything, what I had to do and take care of the business of the job you had to do. And, you know, I was very blessed to meet so many wonderful players and, and they loved me so much. They were really inspired how much accomplished I had in my life and, and for Special Olympics. And, you know, I, I do thank Big Mike and everyone for their support of the skaters and I'm gonna continue to work with the skaters for years to come and I'm so blessed and I love baseball and I will continue to, and I will continue to enjoy sports and continue to work with the skaters for a long time. Well Tank, you are an inspiration and we're so thankful that you would share your story with us. Continued success. We can't wait to see what you do next. Who knows, maybe there's an eighth sport out there for you somewhere. Tank, thanks so much. Thank you. Good morning, I'm Ben Toyo. I've been special Olympics Texas for Africa for 13 years. My favorite sport is kayaking. Thank you for joining us today and showing support of the Special Olympics Texas. Thank you for any amount that you can donate. We, de we, we appreciate your support. Thank you. Thank you, Ben. As we close the program, we want to thank all of you for joining us today. We understand that times are challenging and quite frankly, a little bit strange. We would definitely prefer to have everybody in a big ballroom gathering together for one of our normal celebrations, but that obviously can't happen today. But as they say, the show must go on and these sports programs and social programs for our athletes, they must continue as well. We'll get them back on track just as soon as it's safe to do that. In the meantime, we hope you were able to donate and help the Special Olympics family continue to grow. We'll see you at our competitions very soon and we look forward to that day. Again, thank you for your great support for our Breakfast with Champions Gulf Coast and thank you again to all of our sponsors who make so much of this possible. More importantly, thank you to our athletes who make Special Olympics what it is. Thank you for joining us.